Hey folks, Mr. Dell here. We are going to be looking at uh, using our pattern skills here to um, complete a table and make some um, explanation of what X and Y are and just talk about that um, idea here. So we are pulling this question from, this is from CPM uh, and this is course two, oops, course three, CC3, okay? And it is section 4.1.4, okay? So, and this is problem 4-41. Uh, Use your pattern skills to complete the table below and answer the uh, following statements. So our in, our out, out, out sorry, our x and our y. So if I look, I, I, I have actually, um, when I think about my pattern, I'm figuring out what I do to that X to find that Y, right? Interesting enough, at the end of this table, they tell me if I put an X, I do three X minus two to find the Y. So they actually gave me my rule within the table, right? That is my rule, three X minus two. If I put an X, I get three X minus two. Let's check it. So they're saying multiply three times the X and then subtract two, and that's what you're gonna get for the Y. So if I say three times two, is six minus two is four. Sure enough, three times 10 is 30 minus two is 28. Yep, that is the rule. So let's complete our table. So what is three? So I'll do some math up here. Three times negative three minus two. So I'm doing this one here because I'm given the X as negative three. So three times negative three is negative nine and negative nine minus two. Remember when you're Taking a negative and subtracting a positive, you're getting full, further negative. You can also look at it as negative plus, negative nine plus negative two. Subtraction is always adding the opposite as well. So negative nine, negative two makes that a negative 11. Now we have a bunch of Y's here, right? And I've got to find my X's. So remember my rule is three X minus two. What, what does that mean? That means if the, that's the, the rule, I can look at that as that's y is equal to 3x minus 2, right? y is equal to 3x minus 2. So here are a bunch of y's. Now I've got to find the x. So if I think about it, I need to, let's start with this one, 13. So I'm saying the 13 is the y, and I now need to find the x. So it's working backwards, right? It's actually solving for x if now I'm given the Y. So instead of some minus two, I'm going to add two, right? To both sides to get, to figure out what my X is. I'm doing the opposites to find out what X is. So now this is 15 is equal to three X. And then if I divide by three, both sides, I get X is equal to five. So I know now that if X is five, I'd get 13 for Y. So let's check that. So if I go back and put it X into here, so three times five is 15 minus two is 13. So that's what that works. So this is that idea of backwards, going backwards, right? So if we can think about this being my rule, I can plug in any Y and then solve for X to find the X. Or another way of thinking about it is just working backwards. So here's negative 17. And my rule is to subtract two. So let's add two. I'm going to work backwards to find out what X is. Add two negative 15 plus two, excuse me, negative 17 plus two is negative 15. And then normally it would be three times X. So now we just divide by three. Instead of multiply by three, divide by three. So I'm at negative 15 once I added two and dividing by three makes it negative five. So that would be negative five. So let's check it. If I put a negative five in here, three times negative five is negative 15 minus two. Negative 15 minus two is negative 17. So it works. Negative five would be that X. So then we do it again with the 10. So a couple things you can do. You could work backwards, right? I could say uh, add instead of minus two, add two. So if I say 10 plus two, I get 12. And then instead of three times uh, the X, I'm going to divide by three, 12 divided by three. So then divide by three and I get four. So that number, or excuse me, not four, divide by three, not divide by four, divide by three, I do get four. So four is the X, four is the input that gets the output of 10. So I can keep working backwards. 
Uh, I believe that's 25. Yep, so 25, if I have 25, I'm going to take 25 again and add 2, working backwards, add 2, so that's 27. And then instead of multiply by 3, divide by 3. What is 27 divided by 3? I get 9. Okay. So last one, the Y is 48, 148. So I can once again do the work backwards. 148 plus 2 instead of minus 2 is 150. And then 150 divided by 3 instead of times 3, because I'm working backwards to find the X, I get 50. So it's working backwards. You can look at the math that way, or you can actually plug in your Y that you're trying to then find the X for and solve for X using your solving equation skills. All right. So I got my table filled out. Now, A, explain in words what is done to the input value x to produce the output value y. So what are we doing? Here's my algebra. The algebra y is equal to 3x minus 2. So in words, what does that mean? y is equal to 3 times the x or the input okay then subtract oops out of the screen there three times the input so y is the output i should also put that well, y is the output so the output is equal to three times the x input then subtract uh two so there's my explain in words what is done to the x to produce the output y. So the y, the output, is equal to 3 times the x, the input, then subtract 2. Okay? Uh, explain part B. Explain the process you use to find the missing input values. So what did we do to find the missing input, right? We were given these outputs. We had to find the input. So our process was, I'm going to, I'm going to write a couple things, was basically using the rule. So we, we used the rule in reverse. Oops. Uh, sorry. Use the rule in reverse. Okay. So use the rule in reverse is what we did. Um, or we just, we, um, that was one thing we did, use the rule in reverse. The other thing we did was to um, substitute the output into the equation. And the equation was y is equal to 3x minus 2. Then solve for x. Okay, so a couple ways you could say it. Use the rule to reverse, use the rule in reverse, or substitute the output. That's what we did over here. Substitute the output. That was this one. Substitute the output into the equation, right? We substitute the output in the equation and then solve for x. So either way you look at it. Okay, there you go.